Hey guys, how's it going? It's and welcome back to the Overwatch Transfer Roundup. So, we have some transfers to go through this weekend, and this one should be a little bit interesting. We've got some transfers going on at all different levels, plus we've got two disbandments, unfortunately, but that tends to happen when we come to an end of a contender's season. So, some people are, av are having their runs through playoffs, and when those runs end, uh, for some reason they may decide to disband. So, we've got some of them as well. But... We're going to start off in South America this time around with the Argentinian main, uh, the Argentinian tank player Beast, who was with Dignity. Uh, Dignity have done very well in South America. I'm sure you may uh, you may have guessed if you followed a contender scene. So he will be retiring from uh, top level play in Overwatch, and he will no longer obviously be with Dignity. Dignity will be looking to replace him. I wish him all the best for the future, and he's going out on kind of a high, so that's really really good. But here is one of our first disbandments. This is Bayaba. So Bayaba are a South Korean team, but they were playing in the Pacific region in Contenders. And they have actually done fairly well this season uh, in Contenders, although the Pacific region is uh, heavily dominated by Far East Society and Talon Esports. So Bayaba, they, they were a team that had only been around this season, I believe. And so it, they've had a little bit of a run for the playoffs they've got a little bit of prize money but they are unfortunately disbanding so this means that their manager time concerto the support players cara ulysses and ophelia will be leaving the tank players refen and bono will be leaving defects player aki will be leaving and the two dps players amgeo and gyuk gyuk will also be leaving by abba and will be unassigned and by abba will no longer be competing in contenders so we will not see them in season two in the pacific it's a shame, but um, yeah, teams that get formed uh, in in open division, which I think I believe by Abba did, uh, teams that get formed in open division and come up through. Sometimes they don't always last, and they can be what we we you might say are a flash in the pan uh, in some respects. But um, I hope some of these players really do get picked up because they are good players. But moving on, and this is a move in the Overwatch League. This is the coach Pajon. So. We know that Pajon was part of the Vancouver Titans, and before that, the Fusion University were never very good. But um, he obviously unassigned since the massive bust-up at the Titans, and he will now be moving over to an assistant coach role at the Hangzhou Spark. So, this is really interesting. Really, really interesting, because the Hangzhou Spark are making moves at the moment. They have signed Architect, as we have already covered previously, and now they have a really good coach in Pajon, so... This is a really good pickup for the Hangzhou Spark, and I think we are only going to see the Hangzhou Spark, you know, improving as they as they move forward. So the Hangzhou Spark have made some, made some really really good moves in the in, in recent weeks, and I think these these are trying to push them to compete with the top teams in Asia. Because if you if you were to say so right now, Hangzhou Spark are a level below the likes of New York, like uh, Shanghai Dragons, like Guangzhou Charge in some respects. And they can be up there, I think. So, yeah. Some of the moves that Hangzhou Spark made have definitely improved this team. And it will be interesting to see if they can push through and get some more consistently improving results with that, I would say, is the best way of describing it. But now we are going to move on to, again, the Pacific region. This is Electric Gaming because they have let go of their DPS player, their Korean DPS player, Hang Jum. Uh, I'm... I don't think I'm saying that right, but I do apologize. Um, so he will no longer be assigned again. This is a move where, you know, these teams have now finished their season and they're going to start jigging about their rosters to try and get the right, uh, the right balance, should we say. And yeah, we will see if they can get that balance right. We will see if they can get that balance right, but we do wish them all the best in finding another team. So... The next move is in Korea, this is at GC Busan Wave, and they now have a new head coach who goes by the name of Zoom. So GC Busan Wave, they haven't really hit the heights that they want to, they're always kind of like a mediocre team in Korea if I could say that at the moment, because well they used to be good, but they're not so much anymore. And uh, the Zune used to be with Meta Athena. Now, Meta Athena obviously disbanded, one, a, a big team to disband, really. And so this is a good pickup for GC Busan Wave. And we'll see if we'll see if GC Busan Wave can string together some better results because I, I'm a, I'm of a strong 
sort of feeling that they want to be right up there with the best in Korea. And yeah, they're not there yet. They're certainly not there yet, but they have a history in, in Korea and we will see if they can get where they want to go. But moving on from that, and we come to the Overwatch League. This is Numlocked. Numlocked coming in as a player for the Toronto Defiant, not just a coach. I think he's taken on sort of a dual, dual role. I think that makes Numlocked the oldest player in the Overwatch League, though. Because Numlocked is 27. And I can't think of another player that is 27. Um... <laughs> So I think that makes him the oldest player in the in the Overwatch League. Numlocked has an incredible history in Overwatch esports. He's been everywhere. He's been in NA contenders, European contenders. He's been at British Hurricane. He's been at Los Angeles Valiant. He's been in the Overwatch League before, um, and he's been at you know things like NLG esports before the Overwatch League. So, and Team Dignitas. So yeah, he's got a very storied history. But he has uh, a contenders title in America in, in North America. He has a second place in in the in the European region, and he has a third, fourth place in the inaugural season playoffs with the Valiant at in the at the Overwatch League level. So he's got a very very storied history in Numlocked. But I think Numlocked is going to be uh, a coach slash player for the Toronto Defiant, and he will come in as a backup for Beast if they need him. I can't imagine that Numlocked is going to start, uh, unfortunately. Um, but I think he's going to be more of a mentor to Beast, which I think is a very good role role model for Beast in some respects. Because Numlocked has so much experience, it's actually bonkers. But, moving on, and we have another move in the Overwatch League. This is Zachary. So, Zachary's been at the Dallas Fuel. I don't know whether you've, uh, you remember, he's kind of been gathering dust in the broom cupboard at, at Dallas Fuel since Doha and Decay have come in. And, let's be honest, Dallas Fuel are not going to play anyone else but Doha and Decay. Because it's Doha and Decay. It's, it's probably the duo of DPS that carry the most in the Overwatch League, let's be honest. And, um... Zachary has never got a look in since last season, since those changes. So Zachary will be retiring from the Overwatch League and will no longer be competing for Overwatch. I think he will probably end up moving to Valorant. A lot of people are doing that. So, um, yeah, I mean, Zachary is not of an age where he would be retiring just because oh, I'm fed up with it. He's 19 years old, let's be honest. And he was a kind of a young prodig prodigy at one point. So, yeah, this is unfortunate, but yeah. He was not going to get a look in at Dallas, let's be perfectly honest. Now, moving back to Korea, and this is a incomer at Blossom. This is a Korean DPS player, MJS. He is coming in for Blossom, and Blossom, again, a team that has a bit of a history in Korea that haven't really hit the heights that they wanted to, and I think they want to push on next season. So, yeah, I think this is a good signing for Blossom, and we will see how they do. Sticking with Korea, though, we saw that GC Busan Wave have picked up a new head coach, and they've also let a coach go. This is the, this is Zinc, one of their coaches that they've let go. He will now no longer be assigned, and will be looking for a team. Then we move to Haffy Call. Now Haffy Call, poor poor Haffy Call. Um, so Haffy Call has been everywhere but the Overwatch League. Like he's been at, before the Overwatch League with Ninjas with Attitude and Fnatic. He was with British Hurricane. When they won European Contenders, he was with uh, Team Envy when they won North American Contenders East, or West as it was back then. I think he was with Numlocked at the time. Um, and he's been consistently at the top level of European Contenders, but he's never actually got that shot at the Overwatch League, which I think is pretty triggering, I'm not going to lie. Um, unfortunately, he's been unassigned since he left the Eternal Academy once they disbanded once again. And has not found a team since. And so he is retiring from Overwatch. And I know for a fact that he has joined a Valorant team. Um, so yeah, it's it's uh, an opportunity missed, I think. I think Haffy Call should have had a shot at the Overwatch League at some point. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like he's going to ever get his chance now. And uh, yeah, that's a sad one. I'm not going to lie. Um, he's been ever present for the Icelandic uh, Overwatch World Cup team as well. So... That's going to be a big loss for them, and uh, I do wish him all the best in his uh, days with Valorant. But, then we have another move at the Overwatch League. Now, we know the Washington Justice are wanting to move to an all-Korean roster. This means shipping out some of the old non-Korean parts, shall we say. They've signed Janu, they're off tank, and so they do not need Elevote anymore. Elevote is no longer assigned and is leaving the Washington Justice. Um... <laughs> 
I don't think Elivote is a bad player. He's He was always very, very good in European contenders and has a history of second places, if not first places, across the European uh, and North American circuit. So, yeah, I think this is... I think this is disappointing, and I hope Elivo gets another shot at some point. Um, I'd like to see him mixed in with a roster like uh, like maybe Toronto or someone like that. Not saying that Toronto need him, but a roster that is built like that, a more diverse roster, not just a... He was dumped in with a load of Koreans, let's be honest. And I don't think that really was where he needed to be. Um, also, obviously, at the Washington Justice, we know that Lolshish is there as well, who was uh, a lot of the time Elivo's partner in crime. Um, Lolshis has been inactive at the Washington Justice for a long time. So, um, I don't know what is going on with Lolshish exactly, but I expect him to be let go as well, uh, when they get a the chance to. Um, it's very weird what's going on with Lolshish. Uh, we've really heard nothing about it. But, let's be honest, the, the Washington Justice roster is now Janu, Steer Chain, God, Tuba, Roar, and Ark, and whatever they decide to add to that. They are possibly keeping Lolshish to keep up to a seven-member squad, I don't know, but he's not active so uh yeah it's a it's a puzzling one that one but moving back to korea this is uh blossom letting go of a korean dps player because obviously they got bored in njs so they're shipping someone out this is vansa who will be leaving blossom and will be no longer assigned moving back to the overwatch league though and this is a transfer i'm sure you've all heard of it's haxel we finally know where he's going rookie of the year last year was at the vancouver titans and obviously ran away before that an incredibly Incredibly good DPS player coming from Korea. And of course, he's signing up with the New York Excelsior. So, New York, looking like they've got this very, very, very stacked uh, DPS line now. I mean, you can argue with the fact that they have Haxel, Who Are You, uh, Libero, Sabiobi, and Nene. I mean, that's, that's the stuff of dreams right there, really. And this has definitely made the NYXL more powerful. Um, it'll be interesting to see how they implement Haxel alongside Libero and the rest of them, because they already had some really good, uh, DPS like that. It's not really a meta right now where Who Are You can can shine, um, but I think the acquisition of Haxel actually hurts Who Are You, who are you a lot, even though he's passed. Um, Haxel is phenomenal, and we all know about the Haxel Genji as well. So, um, yeah, I think Who Are You is, uh... Is gonna suffer for this one, I think, and I might, his days might be numbered at the NYXL. I wouldn't be surprised, but uh, Haxel is a really good pickup for the NYXL, and he, I mean, he's gonna improve this team, that's without a doubt. So, moving back to the Washington Justice, and we've already mentioned about them moving to an all Korean lineup, and this means that they're gonna get rid of their head coach, John Galt, who was from Singapore, and again, they haven't replaced, uh, replaced him with anyone right now, and it's, it's a little disappointing, I think. Although this came in about uh, about the 6th of June, uh, I think it's a little bit late, considering we're coming into the start of the new of the new months of league fixtures and stuff like that. I think they could have done this earlier and then been more prepared going into it, but hey, you know, that's whatever, isn't it? Now the sideshow saga continues. He was on a 14-day uh, contract at the Florida Mayhem, but because of a charity stream that was done, um, he's... 14-day contract has actually been transferred to the Los Angeles Gladiators now. So, he is now part of the Los Angeles Gladiators and they can use him if they wish to use him. Um, yeah, it, sh it should be interesting. Um, I, will be I believe it's the same 14-day contract, so that 14-day contract will run out before the league starts again. Uh, which it already has. So, yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to see if Sideshow just gets left, get <laughs> gets let go at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a good meme. Let let's just say it's a good meme. Um... Moving over to China and like this player, this is the second disbandment of this of this video and like this player, obviously, they've had a good showing in China this year, but not uh, this year, this season, uh, but nothing too extraordinary and they have let go of the roster. So, the Chinese manager MPP, the Taiwanese coach Mushroom has gone, the two, the two support players, one Korea, one, one Korean player, Blue Moon, and one Chinese player, Mizuki, the Chinese tank player Binz, the Korean tank player Mino, the rest are DPS, so it's two Chinese DPS, V, 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 uh, and Pity, and then a Korean DPS, Snorlax. They've all been let go from Like This Player, and they will all be looking for teams. Look, Like This Player won't be competing in Season 2 of Contenders, most likely now. 
So moving back to Electric Gaming in the Pacific and they have also let go of another player. This is the uh, support player, the Korean support player, my name. He is actually retiring completely from Overwatch now and will no longer be competing. So we wish him all the best for the future. We have a transfer in the Overwatch League. I've mentioned this in the Overwatch League roundups and such, so you probably already know about it, but this is the American support player Paintbrush. He was with the Los Angeles Gladiators. He hasn't really got too much of a look in over Big Goose and Shaz. We know how good the, that pair is, the Los Angeles Gladiators. But the Dallas Fuel have seen some light in him and have decided to pick him up. So he's transferred from the Gladiators to the Fuel. And I think this is a good addition for the Fuel. It'll be interesting to see if he gets time over the likes of Closer and people like that. The Fuel, they're steadily improving and I ho I'm hoping Paintbrush can be a part of that improvement. Now, moving over to China. This is Team CC picking up four different players. So, it, this is interesting because Team CC have actually done really well in China this year. But they've decided to continue improving their rosters. So, they've decided to add four players. One Chinese player and three Korean players. The one Chinese player is the support player, Burner. And the three, three Korean players are one support, Min Seok. And two DPS players, Spectra and Guang Boon. So, they are all coming into Team CC. And Team CC have got quite the roster right now. And they're doing really well in a in contenders. So yeah, can anyone can anyone stop Team CC in China? It'd be very interesting to find out. But we have some movements in Korea as well. This is Element Mystic take uh, letting go of two players. This is their tank players Alpha and Another. Alpha's actually been at uh, Element Mystic for quite a while. So there are definitely some changes going on at Element Mystic. They really haven't. Okay, they they did they did well in the regular season, but in the playoffs they I don't think really uh, lived up to what they wanted to be. Element Mystic, obviously one of those top teams in Korea, as we've known in Korea anyway, and they just really haven't been able to keep up. Runaway got better as the time went on. OT Blast have been up there, and Element Mystic have just been in a little bit below, a little bit below. So yeah, they're obviously looking to make improvements ahead of season two of Contenders in Korea. We have a movement in North America. This is the Scottish tank player Cameron. He was two-way with the with Square One and Maryville Saints, or Saints as they are now known. Um, but he is now permanently moving to the Saints. He was with Square One before. So this is probably a move because uh, they probably brought him on board for NA Contenders playoffs. And they've decided to make it a permanent fixture. So this is a good move for Cameron. He's obviously impressed at the Saints and they want to keep him on. But... Two more moves to go through. This is one at Dreadlords in the European contenders area. This is the Hong Kong manager, Alicia, who is with the Dreadlords. They will no longer be with Dreadlords. They will be looking for a team to manage if they wish to stay in the Overwatch scene. And I wish them all the best. And then lastly, we have a movement out of Electric Gaming once again in the Pacific. This is the Korean coach, Signal. He will no longer be with Electric Gaming and will be no longer assigned to a team. And again, we'll be looking for someone to coach if he wishes to stay around. But that is it for this one. It's been actually quite a lengthy one and I'm not sure why because it hasn't been like a massive amount of transfers. We've just been talking a lot. But there's a lot of, there's some upsetting ones here like Bayaba and like this player disbanding and then um, Zachary also leaving. Uh, Hafikul as well, who I really think is a player that should have got a shot at the Overwatch League and never did. But there's also some very big transfers here, like uh, Paintbrush, like Haxel. It'll be very interesting to see how they do. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next video. See you then.